Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in because today we have a very special guest. You guys are so lucky to be hearing from Naomi Brockwell. So you mentioned that there are, there are some easy ways that people can protect their privacy online. Maybe is there something, uh, you know, right now that you can share that maybe someone can put into practice uh, today? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing you need to be aware of is how data is collected. And it's not that the government has, you know, feelers into your computer and they're getting everything directly. It's actually like the vast majority of data that's collected is because you've handed it over voluntarily. It's because you're using services that are not end-to-end -end encrypted and that company has access to everything. And then the government doesn't even need to subpoena companies to get that information. After you voluntarily hand over your data, there's no expectation of privacy there under the law. And so they can just hand over anything. And all they all the government needs to say is like, pretty please. And the company, you know, can do whatever they want. Um, so mm -hmm. understand that you're putting yourself at risk uh, by doing that. And, uh, you know, even if it's a company you really trust, if they have access to your data, if it's just like an honor system that says that, oh, well, they're, we're, we're not going to use it, we're not going to hand it over, but we can still see everything, you're still putting yourself at risk. So I would start to seek out services that take data outside of their reach. So one of the first things you can do is well, stop using Telegram, stop using SMS, stop using, you know, social media DMs, use Signal. It is an end-to-end -end encrypted um, uh, messaging service. It's very well audited. It's very respected. And it's a great way to just reclaim that data. Realize that your telco provider, they have been known to sell your real-time location data to bounty hunters. I mean, there are articles, just Google it. Uh, don't Google it. That's another thing we'll talk about. <laughs> like brave it, whatever you want to do in mm. your search engine. Um, but like, there's so much information. They just see all your messages in clear text. There's so much data you're giving these companies. Your ISP, they're getting so much information about your online activities. You can mitigate that by using a VPN. Don't use a free VPN. Another hot tip, most of the apps that you will find in the app store are literally just shells for data collection tools. If you look at the permissions they're asking for, if you, you know, decompile the code and look at it, there are so many apps out there that are literally capturing your mouse movements. Why are they doing that? Well, to mimic uh, human behavior, this is just a dragnet data collection scheme uh, because they probably run, um, you know, bots and, and they want to... Um, uh, create, be able to mimic human behavior so that it makes their botnets more effective. I mean, so just be careful of VPNs is the main point there. Um, there are some really good ones. There are some that seem good because there are a lot of people promoting them and there are some uh, really bad ones. I, my go-to is Molvad. It's very um, respected in the community. Um, I also like Proton VPN, although disclaimer, mm. um, I have heard some mixed reviews about it, but I do use Proton as well. Um, and I just be careful of a lot of the others. They tend to be owned by giant data collection companies. Um, if you look under the hood a lot of there there are companies out there that basically offer white label services as well where you know different vpns it's all the same vpn under the hood people are just slapping their own label on it so just be really careful um you know other companies that are collecting your data so google google is a big one stop giving your data to google because it all ends up in the hands of governments all over the world so first thing email um use an email service that well, has end-to-end -end encrypted emails uh, between users on the same platform, has mm. zero access encryption, which means that even if it, you're not receiving an email from some someone on the same platform, when it arrives in your inbox, it's encrypted with your own private key, which means it puts it outside of their reach. I really like Proton um, Mail for that. I think it's great. Another great one, Tutor Nota. There are some really great um, privacy-focused emails out there and you can, you can try them out and just see which one you like. Um, but absolutely don't use Gmail. They can see the contents of every email you're sending. They put all of that into their uh, algorithms. They analyze the content of all of your emails to basically feed their algorithms and all that information ends up in, I mean, just part of their, their, their real-time bidding advertising system. They literally broadcast it to over 4,000 companies in the US, over 1,000 in the EU. And then those companies are largely data brokers and advertisers and everything. So they sell that information. It just, it's crazy. You, you got to stop giving your information to 
Google. Um, and then the last two things I would mention, I would say browser, that's a big one. You can make a big difference. I like Brave personally because mm. out of the box, it's super private. You don't need to do any tweaking. They like their defaults are really top notch when it comes to privacy. I know a lot of people who really like hardened Firefox. So if you go into Firefox, but then you like tinkering, you can have a lot of control, granular, granular control over a lot of settings, add in a lot of plugins, like different containers and things like that. Um, so if you like tinkering Firefox and, and going, doing the work is a good option. Otherwise brave out the box is a great option. And then search engine again, how, how awful and insidious is Google when I, a privacy advocate, can't even say like, just Google it. And then realize <laughs> that I'm, I'm just telling, using someone's brand name. Um, we don't need to be Googling things anymore. There are absolutely competitors out there. If you really like Google because they have good search results, use startpage.com. It's basically a private front end for Google, allows you to access the same search results, uh, but they're not collecting all of that data um or i brave search is my default again they do a lot of stuff mm. to again just make your searches more private um they have different things called goggles which is cool i i personally also as well as privacy worry about the neutrality of these search engines i worry about how results are being filtered whether i'm being shown what people want me to see or whether i'm actually being shown the information i'm looking for so what brave offers is a thing called goggles where you can actually determine how you want your results to be filtered you know if you only want a certain political persuasion if you only don't want to see any pinterest articles if you only want to see tech journals like you can really tweak it to prioritize the things that are valuable to you and and I think giving individuals back that control is really cool. So just a few of the top basic things that you can immediately dive into just to start to reclaim your digital space. Um, and then when it comes to your cryptocurrency usage, you know, just be aware that if you're not behind a VPN, your ISP is seeing every website that you're visiting, um, you know, even with transport layer encryption, they could still see the domain. Uh, so just be aware of that. So if you're... Yeah, I mean, and a lot of the blockchain explorer sites are honeypots, also realize that. Mm. So if you're typing in like transaction IDs, if you're typing in addresses to try and see how much is in certain balances, if they're linked to you, you know, people are going to, um, uh, the, a lot of those sites do correlate that with your real world uh, identity and they create dossiers and use it for chain analytics and all of that. So just be really aware of those sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't, I did not know that about the blockchain explorer. I learned a lot just now, actually. Well, I was going to say, obviously not all uh, chain analytics, uh, ch uh, blockchain explorer sites are honeypots. There are some good ones, but no matter what the site is, you have no way of knowing either way. So just make sure that you're protecting your identity when you, if you need to use them. Yeah.